Good evening and welcome to the Daily News Roundup. I am Abigail Smythe. Coming up in this evening's newscast, tropical storm watch in effect for Jamaica. Parents of children 12 years and under can now access free medical care at University Hospital of the West Indies. JPSS customers will have to wait a while longer for lower electricity bills. Police probing triple murder on Lincoln Avenue, St. Andrew. JCF having challenges finding suitable young people to enlist. In business, Development Bank of Jamaica offering $100 million grant to help investors and entrepreneurs. In the region, a former Haitian presidential candidate assassinated. On the international scene, 150 people killed in stampede in South Korea. And in sports, Paul Pogba to miss France's World Cup defense due to surgery recovery. Now for the news in detail. A tropical storm watch remains in effect for Jamaica. The Meteorological Service says Tropical Storm Lisa has developed from the area of disturbed weather south of the island. This means tropical storm conditions continue to pose a possible threat to the island. Lisa is moving towards the west and a westward to west northwestern motion is expected over the next few days. On the forecast track, the center will continue moving south of Jamaica and the Cayman Islands today and tomorrow before approaching Central America. America on Wednesday. The system has the potential to produce two to four inches of rainfall and strong gusty winds reaching near tropical storm force, mainly over eastern and southern parishes. Residents should be on alert for possible flash flooding in flood prone areas. The Met Service is reminding fishers on the Keys and Banks to exercise extreme caution at this time due to dangerous sea conditions associated with the tropical storm now moving over Jamaica's southern offshore waters. Tropical storm conditions are likely to affect sections of the island throughout tonight. The Met Service continues to monitor the progress of the system. The Ministry of Health and Wellness has announced that parents of children 12 years and under can access free medical care at the University Hospital of the West Indies. This took effect on Sunday. The ministry says this arrangement is in response to the increase in viral illnesses and the overcrowding at the Bustamante Hospital for Children, which is usually seen this time of year. The ministry states that children and the elderly are among the most vulnerable groups, especially at this time as the flu and gastroenteritis season intensifies. The ministry also issued a reminder that only paracetamol should be taken in the event of illness and to visit the nearest health center if symptoms do not improve. Officials of the opposition People's National Party, PNP, along with supporters, staged a demonstration Monday morning outside the Spanish Town Hospital in St. Catherine. They are demanding the resignation of Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton over the deaths of 14 babies over a four-month period at the Victoria Jubilee Hospital. Among those involved in the protest were General Secretary Dr. Dayton Campbell, Vice President Norman Scott, who is also the mayor of Spanish Town, and councillors of the St. Catherine Municipal Corporation. Campbell asserts that Tufton has failed in his responsibilities and should be removed. He is also hitting back against former Member of Parliament for Clarendon North Central, Pernell Charles Sr., who blasted the opposition for its call for Tufton to resign. Speaking at the Clarendon Southeastern Constituency Conference at Ver Technical High School on Sunday, Charles Sr. defended Tufton's leadership and that of Prime Minister Andrew Holness, who he said have carried Jamaica through the COVID-19 pandemic better than many other countries. He labeled the calls by the opposition for Tufton's resignation in relation to the deaths of the babies as disrespectful. In response, the PNP General Secretary argues that Charles Sr. should stay out of politics because, quote, we really do not want to have to respond to him in certain ways, end quote. Campbell laments that the health minister should be held accountable. He argues that what is disrespectful is the health minister to know about the infection in hospitals in July and failed to inform cabinet and the prime minister. 
Campbell says Tufton should understand that the collective knowledge of all Jamaicans is better than his own individual knowledge and sharing the information would help the country to arrive at a solution quicker and ensure that the Jamaican people are not being disrespected by saying they can't handle information. The opposition says it plans to ramp up demonstrations in other municipalities in their quest to get Tufton to resign. The Jamaica Public Service Company, JPS, says customers will have to wait a while longer before they see lower prices in their electricity bills. JPS says this is the case despite the company adopting more liquefied natural gas LNG. JPS's revelation comes as customers are now experiencing an increase in their electricity bills. JPS's Director of Corporate Communications, Winsome Callum, says LNG contributes some 60% of electricity the JPS provides. But, she says, while the price of LNG is traditionally more stable, it has become more volatile as a result of the war between Russia and Ukraine. In the meantime, Ms. Callum is urging customers to conserve on energy usage, though she admits that conserving energy may not lead to a reduction in customers' bills. She also says some JPS customers who've benefited from the government's subsidy on electricity are now experiencing a shock after that program ended in August. Head of the Westmoreland Police Division, Senior Superintendent Wayne Josephs, says the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, is having a challenge finding suitable young people to enlist among its, among its ranks. He acknowledged that some people might not be aware of the various recruitment drives and appealed to citizens to assist the police to build out its capacity by sharing such information with their neighbors and encouraging them to come forward. He says the JCF needs the assistance as they work to improve and increase the capacity of the force. In an effort to help achieve its target of enrolling 1,300 new cops this year, the JCF has turned to high school where recruitment drive have already been conducted in Westmoreland, Clarendon, St. Elizabeth, Manchester, Trelawney, St. Mary and St. Anne. Commissioner of Police Major General Anthony Anderson advised during a during a recent stakeholders meeting in Westmoreland that anyone who has the intention to serve in the police force must be fit and proper and should be able to pass a polygraph test. The police are trying to determine if Friday evening's triple murder on a New Lincoln Avenue in St. Andrew is linked to a shooting incident on Thursday. In Friday's incident, four men were shot, three fatally, by unknown assailants. The deceased are 55-year-old Randolph McBean, 41-year-old Donville Charlton, both of Lincoln Crescent, Kingston 5, and 38-year-old Barrington Phillips, a contractor of Berwick Road, Kingston 13. Head of the Constabulary's Corporate Communications Unit, CCU, Senior Superintendent Stephanie Lindsay, says the men were attacked while playing dominoes in the area. She says those killed are not known to be connected to any active gangs in the area. However, she says police detectives are exploring two theories as they try to determine a motive for the attack. She states that a man suspected to be a gangster from the community was killed in Red Hills, St. Andrew, in an incident involving the police on Thursday. The St. Anne's Bay police are probing the murder of a teenager whose body was discovered with gunshot wounds on Thursday. The deceased has been identified as 15-year-old Nicarda Stewart of Lilyfield and Windsor in St. Anne. It's reported that the body of the teenager was found in bushes in the Lawlands community in the parish about 8.30 Thursday morning. The police were called and the team which responded observed what appeared to be gunshot wounds to the head of the teenager's body. The St. James Police are investigating the death of a Jamaica Defense Force a JDF soldier in Adelphi Land, Somerton. The body of 26-year-old JDF Private Anthony Kenrick Willox was found hanging from the rafters of an abandoned house in the area. It was discovered by his brother, Lamanda Willox, who went searching for the soldier after reportedly viewing videos of him, saying he was depressed and putting a rope around his neck. The police were called and the body removed to the Cornwall Regional Hospital, where the soldier was pronounced dead.
Gunmen struck in the Pernell Charles Arcade in downtown Kingston on Saturday, leaving one man dead and another wounded. The deceased has been identified as 31-year-old Sanjay Lewis of George's Lane, Kingston. Reports are that about 2 o'clock Saturday afternoon, Mr. Lewis was inside the arcade when he was attacked and shot by armed men. He was taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead. It was later discovered that a second person was wounded during the incident. Two suspects have been arrested in connection with the recent fatal shooting of a Chinese businessman in Green Island, Hanover. Head of the Hanover Police, Superintendent Sharon Beeput, says the men will be questioned about the murder of 36-year-old He Xing. She says four other suspects held in the case were released after being questioned. Mr. Jing was shot dead in front of his employees and customers in his supermarket on October 19. In the incident captured on CCTV footage, two armed thugs were seen entering the Orange Hill supermarket. They immediately opened fire on Mr. Jing, hitting him multiple times. The men then proceeded to steal money, liquor and other items before exiting the supermarket. The school principal, who is implicated in an alleged land fraud in St. Catherine, Sulin Ward Brown, has been granted $2 million bail. Questionable transactions involving her have also increased to almost $8 million. During the bail application in the St. Catherine Parish Court on Monday, defense attorney Deborah Martin said Ward Brown has a fixed place of abode and would turn up for her trial. She told the court that the principal also has two teenage children depending on her and that her church now has responsibility for them. Parish Judge Desiree Allen asked if the complainants were still in the area and it was revealed that they left. Prosecutors said the matters are serious and will take time while investigations continue. The judge then offered a bail in the sum of $2 million and ruled that Ward Brown must report to the Portmore Police Station on Thursdays and Fridays. A stop order was also placed against her at the ports. Ward Brown is to reappear in court on February 17, 2023, when the matter will again be mentioned. Allegations in court are that the principal collected monies from several residents in Clifton for the sale of government-owned lands adjoining the Clifton community. The police had initially reported that five people came forward with claims that they made payments totaling $4 million. However, during Monday's hearing, the court heard that the number of complaints has increased to 12, with the total amount of money involved now at approximately $8 million. Earlier this month, the Prime Minister Andrew Holness announced the demolition of unfinished structures located in the Greater Bernard Lodge area. He also told the House of Representatives that the Klansman criminal gang based in Spanish Town was linked to the scam. Justice Minister Delroy Chuck has announced that he will be spearheading an effort to have the licenses of motorists with outstanding traffic tickets suspended until their court matters are settled. The Justice Minister says the government will be taking a firm stand against indisciplined drivers. He adds that in that regard, some motorists continue to operate despite having several traffic tickets. This, he says, should no longer be tolerated. Minister Chuck states that approval will be sought from Cabinet for significant changes relating to the issue of how outstanding traffic tickets are treated. He affirms that the new Road Traffic Act will be fully implemented within a few weeks to address a number of issues on the roads. In the meantime, the Justice Minister says no person with any previous criminal conviction will be, can be, or should be appointed as a Justice of the Peace. The Minister is refuting a story being circulated that attorney at law Isat Buchanan, who has prior convictions, is a Justice of the Peace. Minister Chuck says the vocation only admits persons of the highest and unquestionable integrity. He notes that persons who have been convicted of any crime would be denied commissioning. Minister Chuck notes that Buchanan has gone through the training but was not sworn in as he was disqualified based on his previous conviction. 
Before he was allowed to practice law in Jamaica, Buchanan was convicted in Jamaica in 1997 for possession of, dealing in, and taking steps to export cocaine. Three years later, he was convicted in the United States for a conspiracy to import cocaine and given a 10-year prison sentence. Minister Chuck further states that he was not and cannot be appointed until he is sworn in and the process takes place at the time of commissioning, at which point the certificate of appointment is delivered. The Justice Minister points out that no one is a Justice of the Peace until they are sworn in and sign the document, which is then returned and kept by the Ministry of Justice. And the opposition People's National Party, PNP, says 99% of its candidates are in place as, it's as it prepares for the upcoming local government election. PNP General Secretary Dr. Dayton Campbell says the party is doing the necessary groundwork to come out victorious in the election which is due early next year. He asserts that the PNP is not daunted by comments that the governing party will sweep the election despite the economic challenges facing the country. Speaking at a party divisional conference in the Northwest St. Anne constituency Saturday evening, Robert Montague said the JLP is making all necessary preparations for the upcoming election and expressed confidence that the JLP will win every single parish when the election is called. And in business news, the Development Bank of Jamaica, DBJ, is offering a $100 million grant to help investors and entrepreneurs meet patent requirements. The program, titled the Boosting Innovation, Growth and Entrepreneurship Ecosystems Program, was recently approved. The program manager, Christopher Brown, says successful inventors, researchers, and entrepreneurs can receive up to $4 million. The program will cover up to 80% of the sum for approved projects, and the funds may be used to file patent applications for products or inventions, both locally and internationally. Applicants must have a registered business in Jamaica and submit a patent application with the Jamaica Intellectual Property Office, JIPO. Applications will be open until November 25. The DBJ says the initiative is aimed at helping to protect and commercialize the ideas and inventions of local entrepreneurs. And in the region, former Haitian presidential candidate Eric Jean Baptiste was assassinated on Friday. The leader of the rally of progressive National Democrats and his bodyguard were killed in the community of La Boule in the capital of Port-au-Prince. The assassination of Baptiste and his bodyguard has plunged the nation further into turmoil. Following the assassination, Haiti's Prime Minister Ariel Henry expressed outrage. In a message on social media, Mr. Henry stated, quote, We strongly condemn this heinous crime against this patriot, this moderate politician committed to change, end quote. The killing occurred in an area near where President Jovenel Moise was assassinated on July 7, 2021. Gangs are fighting to seek control of the territory. The Food and Agriculture Organization and the United Nations World Food Programme say an unrelenting series of crises has trapped vulnerable Haitians in a cycle of growing desperation without access to food, fuel, markets, jobs, and public services. And on the international scene, 150 people were killed and 76 injured in a stampede in South Korea's capital, Seoul, on Saturday. The tragedy happened as huge crowds gathered at a popular nightlife area for Halloween. The fire service says most of the victims were teenagers and adults in their 20s. Reports say the crush began in a narrow alley when people in a crowd fell over. It was the first outdoor ma no-mask Halloween event since the pandemic. Two foreigners died and 15 were injured in the incident. Afghan Special Forces soldiers who fought alongside American troops and then fled to Iran after the chaotic United States withdrawal last year are now being recruited by the Russian military to fight in Ukraine. Three former Afghan generals say the Russians want to attract thousands of the former elite Afghan commanders into a foreign legion with offers of $1,500 a month 
payments and promises of safe havens for themselves and their families so they can avoid deportation home to what many assume would be death at the hands of the Taliban. One of the generals say they don't want to fight, but they don't have a choice. The Russian recruitment follows months of warnings from U.S. soldiers who fought with Afghan special forces that the Taliban was intent on killing them and that they might join with U.S. enemies to stay alive or out of anger with their former ally. And in sports, reggae girl Drew Spence bagged a brace while her Jamaican teammate Khadija Shaw continued her sizzling form with another goal as both tasted victory in the English FA Women's Super League on Sunday. Tottenham Hotspur crushed Brighton and Hove Albion 8-0 with four goals in each half at the Broadfield Stadium. The win lifted visitors Tottenham to fifth in the table, one place below Manchester City on goal difference. Meanwhile, 25-year-old forward Shaw set City on the way to a 2-1 win over Liverpool with the 21st-minute opener at Academy Stadium. Shaw went into the match in stunning form for City, having scored a brace in each of their past two league victories over Leicester and Tottenham. It was Shaw's eighth goal in all competitions this season, including six in the league. Liverpool, who were prompted to the WSL after winning the championship last season, now sit in 10th place following four successive defeats, while City are building momentum with three wins in a row, despite losing their first two matches. And Paul Pogba will miss France's World Cup defense as he needs more time to recover from knee surgery. His agent announced on Monday that following the player's medical reviews, he will not be able to join Juventus' squad before the World Cup break nor the French national team in Qatar. Pogba hasn't played for Juventus since re-signing for them from Manchester United in the summer, hurting the meniscus in his right knee in July. He initially elected not to go under the knife in a bid to make the Qatar tournament, which kicks off on November 20. However, after returning to training early last month, Pogba changed his mind and opted for surgery, which kept him on the sidelines until two weeks ago when he, recom when he recommenced partial training with Juventus. And that's it for the news roundup for today. I am Abigail Smythe. See you next time.